In this video I'm going to show you how you can make this cartoony looking smoke effect with Unity's particle system. I will briefly gloss over how I created these sprites, but if you want you can just download them from the link in the description. Ok, so let's get started. For the animation I used the free open source software called Krita, which is pretty similar to Photoshop but more suited for digital painting, animation and quite a bit faster. For a reference I thought I'd go straight to the masters and deported some frames from Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame. There's a lot of fire in the movie and it looks pretty great. I will refrain from making jokes here about fire and Notre Dame, it's too easy. So I just drew the outlines and used the reference more for interesting shapes rather than copying frame by frame. All in all there are about 24 sprites making up the fire. For the smoke I simply made three cloud shapes with just a bit of shadow to indicate volume. I kept the color rather neutral and a bit light because darkening it is really easy in Unity. Making it lighter doesn't really work though. One important thing is that they are in one PNG file that are sliced in Unity's sprite editor, because otherwise the particle system will complain. And of course if you use this in a full game the fire sprites should be in one sprite as well for better performance. Now in Unity I import the sprites, drag them all together in the scene to create an animation and save it. I also bring in the smoke sprites and slice them up in the editor by cell count, choosing one column and three rows. Then I add the particle system to the fire game object. Right now nothing shows up because there is no material assigned to it. In the renderer tab under material I choose default sprite, which allows for transparency but no lighting effects. Next I change the order in layer to make sure they are rendered above the fire and the tile map. The default shape is a cone, which works quite nicely for smoke, though we need to rotate it on the x axis by minus 90 degrees. The fact that it is behind the time map doesn't matter as the sorting layer and order and layer take precedence. First I scale the fire to fit the time map and then adjust the radius of the cone to fit the fire. The sprites can be assigned on a texture sheet animation. First we need to switch the mode from grid to sprites and then add the three different smoke sprites. This is where the particle system will throw an error if the sprites are not in one texture. To randomly switch between sprites, hit the little down arrow next to the frame over time curve and switch to random between two constants. Just enter 0 and the highest frame number. And make sure to enter a higher number than you have frames, because if you enter 0 and 2 you won't get the last sprite. But just enter like 3, 4, whatever and Unity will cap it. We can further randomize things a bit by changing the start rotation. Again click the little arrow and choose random between two constants and enter minus 30 and 30. The reason for not just putting in 0 to 360 is that I have drawn some shadow in the sprites and would like to keep a bit of consistency in it. Now the coolest part, color over lifetime. The bar represents the entire lifetime from left to right. Clicking the bottom markers will let you set a new color, the top markers a new alpha value. You can simply add markers by clicking on the top or bottom of the bar. I let the smoke start at zero opacity and then go to almost full opacity real quick. In the end they should fade away, so the last mark will be zero again. For the color I start with an orange to simulate the fire shining its light onto the smoke, which is what happens in real life, but then switch to just a neutral dark gray.
Next off, let's do the size. I think the size of a lifetime looks pretty cool if we choose random between two curves. They would start anywhere from maybe like one third to half of the size and then reach the final size. The final size should happen maybe a bit before the end, so I drag the highest point of both curves a bit to the left. Now the particles look too small overall, so I change the start size to 4. And I adjust the color a bit to make the smoke darker. Lastly, let's add some noise so the particles don't just move in a straight line. First, let's separate the axes because we only want to modify the x value. The frequency determines how often they change their direction from left to right. So choose something like 0.1. By changing the value of the axis, we can up the intensity. Even though 10 looks like a cool tornado, 1 fits better. If you want your smoke to only move left or right, you can choose a really really low frequency and then up the intensity of the X value. And this is it. Play around with values, add or move effects and let me know if you have any questions. You would do me a huge favor by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Thank you and goodbye.